Empty gun salute for the general David Medayeshe Jemi Bemo at 7 decades plus 10. It is the only Bible that says, The days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, or 90 or above, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it soon cut off and we fly away. Psalm 90, verse 12. Today, July 20, General David Medayoshi Jemi Beon, aka Uncle Dave, Clock 80 and we are ringing 80 tolls of the bell in his honor. We are not in the barrack, else we should have shot up 80 gun salute. Uncle Dave deserves it. He is a soldier of conscience and character, a soldier administrator. What can I write about this peculiar elder statesman from my part of the country? What can I remember about the iconic general from Ia in Kogi State, North Central Nigeria? Who is David Medayoshi Jemi Bewa? I would rather put a tribute of his career as a wartime administrator and lucky born soldier in his birthday video. David wanted to become a medical doctor, but fate and destiny had something different in stock for him. David Medayoshi Jemi Bewa was not born with a silver spoon. In fact, he was born with a wooden spoon, but his chi broke the kola knot of fortune for him from early childhood. So, how does it feel to clock 80 on July 20, year 2020? That appears to be a remarkable date for the general, even though the month of July was the same month that took his mother away in year 2016 at age 106. When I met the general inside his Ogudu GRA Lagos Nigeria home early in the year, on Sunday, February 2, 2020, he categorically told me he won't be making a loud party for the basic reasons that many are suffering. Hear him clear. I don't think I am out for any elaborate ceremony other than to thank God. And the reason is that so many people are suffering. The general repeated that statement three times with a very sad look on his face. I am grateful to God. Not that I want to die now. But does a man sit down to decide where and when he wants to die? With that, the general as usual launched into the narration of his humble beginning inside a village which he called a bush near Kaba Deer. Born by a totally uneducated and peasant farmer parent, who only took the risk of listening to the headmaster of a new public school established by the Europeans in his town to allow their little son attend a school. With that, little David became a schoolboy, and that was probably the only singular opportunity this David needed to fight the Goliath of ignorance. The village school allowed him study up to class 4 before he moved to the next village to complete class 5 in another public school. Little David later ascended up for grammar school for a secondary school education. The general became frank with me at the middle of the interview. He said, I had no ambition. I didn't know what ambition was. But today, because I have reached this position, I can be telling you lies that I had this ambition or that ambition. It is all rubbish. I never had one. But by the time little David went to offer grammar school in his teenage years and so many other Nigerians from diverse background, he started developing some thoughts. Before he left the prestigious offer grammar school, David dreamt of becoming a medical doctor later in life. It was very passionate ambition which was to be thrown overboard by the hand of destiny, which led him into the soldiering profession. So, why did Uncle Dave wanted to become a doctor? It was just because I was sick at the time and taken to the hospital and I saw the person who tested me. He was neatly dressed and I was told he is a doctor and I too wanted to become a doctor. Uncle Dave later went to work at the extra department in the township before he joined the army. He went through several trainings in Cardinal, 
and great Britain. And the long and short of it is that he later became an army officer, even against his parents' wish. Destiny was playing a higher role in the life of the Iya boy. His days in the military must have been the best of the best days in the Nigerian army, when content of character than skin color and tribe matter than anything else. Not now, when envy, animosity, and unmeasured behavior is the order of the day. It will appear that General Jemmy Beron's chi has successfully helped him to break his colonel of fortune well enough before he stepped into his army boots. Listen to him again. By the time I became an officer, my ambition was that I wanted to be a captain, army captain, and I said 12 years for myself, that if within 12 years, whatever I was or I became, I must leave the army. But again, fate and destiny are the different package for the Iyagbede born officer. I joined the army in 1961. I was commissioned in 1962. Coop in 1966. So, I have not even reached 10 years, and by January 1st, 1966, I became a captain. Then, we went into the Civil War, or there were coups, counter coups, Civil War, but here I am. I did not even get injured, but I operated. I operated in Kalagu Junction of Abakaliki. I operated in Asaba, or nature, in Navy sector. I didn't get injured. I am grateful to Almighty God. Here I am today. I am not better than those who died. So, sometimes today, when things are happening in Nigeria and I look, it is so difficult to comprehend that we should still be having some of the problems that we are having today. The general's truth is faced the more as anger war is expression. What of those who have died? What did they die for? Particularly when I remembered few things that happened. His countenance changed for the worst as he remembered his worst experience during the war front, the 1967 to 1970 Nigerian Civil War. My battalion was advancing towards Afriku at Abakaliki. And the soldier was trying to help me as commanding officer when we were under fire. And he tried to clear the path under one tree and he said, Augusta, sit down here, sit down here. Before I knew it, General nearly moved to tears as he shot his head. A bullet came and hit him. How can I forget? He burst up his deteriorating emotion. So when these politicians are doing what they are doing, it appears they don't mind if Nigeria catches fire. So I can go on and so forth. So how did the general get his head out of the wall without getting pissed up with a bullet? That's part of the job. When you are in a war zone, every time is almost dead time. It is almost dead time, okay? Because even in war zone, life continues. Sometimes you can just sit down here, just like we are talking now, to just joke. You don't know where the enemy aiming at you is. It is only when you are face to face, you are firing. Not that you see him or he sees you, he is firing there. Yes, you will now know you can't walk around. But as we are sitting here, we may be having a drink because in war zone too, what we do here is what they do here, if there is no fighting. From what General Jenny Benwell told of his war years and the sad reality of today's political situation in Nigeria, with the inept and corrupt conduct of politicians, I deduce that a soldier of his caliber, above all things, pray for peace, for it is a soldier who must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. David Medayoshi Jenny Benwell is still bearing the scars of war even at 80 years. He has seen Nigeria in and out. A two-time governor of old western states when politics was still hot in the old wild west.
a former Minister of Police Affairs, a former senatorial aspirant, a lawyer and businessman. What do you want to take out of Jemmy Bemo that you won't find its usefulness for history? Every part of the autogenarian smells history. In recent times, Jemmy Bemo has equally become an educationist with a model college, Jemmy Bemo International Academy, at his Iyagbere country home in Kogi State, North Central Nigeria. <music> DM, the man and his rule of engagement. I will tell you the attributes of great men. They are unlimitedly humble and never see themselves as important or whatever. It is what ordinary people see of them that makes them great. General Jeremy Bewon, despite turning 80 this year, July 20, appears to be a considerate elder statesman. I have seen few of his types but his humility makes him exceptional. In 2017, there was a pressing national issue I wanted to discuss with the general. And as usual, I was pressed to travel down to the native town of Iyagbede, where he is spending his retirement life as rector of Jemi Beron International Academy. I begged him if he could find time to come down to Lagos or Abuja because of proximity of time. In Abuja, it is far easier to take a car from my hotel suite to his apartment somewhere in Maitama. But the general, who was built to attend the funeral of his predecessor in the different old western region, late General Robert Adeyinka Adebayo in Ekiti State, on Saturday, May 20, 2017, decided to give me a new deal. Benga, can you come down to Ibadan? So that I can travel down from Ekiti and we can meet in Ibadan just for the interview before I return back to Kogi. He humbly suggested. I was shocked and awfully humbled, so I agreed. We left Lagos and traveled down to Ibadan with my team, and we met him at the guest house he secured in Bodija GRE for the purpose of the encounter. He had practically nothing to do in Ibadan at the time than to speak with me and travel back to Ekiti. We had the encounter with him, and it was as usual a fantastic one, as he spoke on national issues and paid tribute to his late boss, General Adeyinka Adebayo. The other time I met him was during his 78th birthday on July 20, 2018, inside his Maitama Abuja home. We ate and drank and chewed banters at his very beautiful, humane, highly sophisticated wife, Lady Modupe Agnes Jemi Benwon, made us all comfortable in the inner chambers of their well-furnished sitting room. I have known Lady Modukme Jemi Bewa for more than two decades since I was a reporter at Fame Weekly magazine. She is humble, intelligent, audacious, well-bred, well-traveled and one of the sparkling women that is presently living on the surface of this earth. I covered the funeral of a highly knowledgeable dad, late Chief John Bosede Ajayi former principal Ikolaba Grammar School Ibadan, who died at age 85 in the year 2015. It was an entire week event from Ibadan to Oriyekite. It was same week the general lost his first wife, Lady Comfort Jemi Benwo, Ni One, and he had to bury both father-in-law and first wife same week. It was the river for him. I think that is also stuff for great men. Last year, April 13, we all stormed Iyagbede, his native town in Kogi State, for days, as he gave out his very beautiful daughter, Omolola, an internationally trained economist to a British born soldier, Captain Samuel Foster, who came with a retinue of his Oyimbo family from the United Kingdom. It was such a stunning experience. With cream de la cream of Nigeria society big weeks attending the event, 
it was a wow experience in Iya. If we have brains like Jamie Bemon and others still living with us, why should we suffer? The Yorubas of Western Nigeria will say, Ogbolobon kijeki akpe agbaniweri. Someone else's wisdom will save the elder from being caused or called a lunatic. In Nigeria, politicians don't use other people's wisdom. They are too afraid to let others know that they are not superhumans. They want to put up a braggadocio and keep the failure flying until they leave power and people and posterity embarrasses them out of existence. Jamin Bewo in his early military career left Oyo as a military administrator to become adjutant general, the Nigeria Army, one of the most sensitive positions a career officer attains in his grueling career in the army. Many government historians today have forgotten how Jamie Bewo got his governor job under General Mutala and Olusegun Obasanjo's regime. 1975 to 1979. Before Obasanjo took over power after the brutal assassination of General Mutala Ramat Muhammad, the late Mutala had appointed Navy Captain Akin Aduwo as General of the Western States in his maiden speech of 30th July 1975. But Aduwo's tenure was short termed over what a lot of historians still termed political somersaults. He was replaced by one Colonel David Jamie Bemo after spending just 30 days in power. He was probably the millard who reigned for the shortest time in the history of Nigerian military politics. As the story goes, it was alleged that Dodom Barracks, the seat of Nigerian power at the time, wanted Aduwo to nationalize Obafemi Awolowo University, OAU, one of the beauties of Western Nigeria. But because of the sensitivity of the institution to the Yoruba people of the Southwest, particularly the highly respected Premier of the Western Region, Chief Obafemi Jeremiah Awolowo, Aduwo decided to play a homeboy game. Since he is from Ondo State, and knowing the implication of what the decision could cost him, politically, he had led to have gone to seek an audience with Chief Awolowo. A decision which backfired as the Army High Command saw Aduwo's gesture as high-level insubordination. It was swiftly removed and Jenny Bewon, a career officer who was General Officer, 1st Infantry Division of the Nigerian Army was appointed by Dodam Barracks to take over Western States as military administrator. Late Francis Adekule Fadri was the first military administrator of Western Region and was killed alongside the head of state, General Aguyi Ironsi, in the infamous July 1966 counter coup that preceded the Three Years' Civil War. General Mutala Mohammed had created seven more states to the already existed seven states under General Yakubu Gowan, who ruled in Nigeria for nine straight years. The new states were Bauchi, Benue, Bono, Imo, Niger, Ogun, and Ondo and this brought the total number of states in Nigeria to 19. So, Jenny Bewo had Oyo to himself, and it was almost a huge task for him to reconstruct the state and give it the desired Western capital city identity it deserves. Jenny Bewo ran Oyo or Ibadan like a president of a small African state. He was firm, disciplined, and a total no-nonsense administrator. Due to the expansion projects he initiated, the city became cumbersome in terms of traffic and to the glory of God. Colonel David Medayeshe Jemi Bewo was the first person in Nigeria to initiate the idea of a Federal Road Safety Corps, which he called Oyo State Road Safety Corps at the time. He contrasted it to Professor Wale Shoyenka, who practicalized it in Ibadan, and the idea worked like magic. Jenny Bewo achieved this in 1977 and it became a novel idea to manage the emerging or Mongols traffic situation in Africa's largest city of Ibadan. In 1986, Nigeria's military ruler, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, adapted Jenny Bewo's FRSC concept and turned it into a national idea and today it is called Federal Road Safety Corps, 
FRSC. Jamie Bewon is an idea man, no doubt. He is not in the class of the stupid and unfortunately hopeless politicians of today's Nigeria who run into power, office, with no idea to direct society to consolidate their reign or tenure of office in order to streamline and enlarge their wardrobes, carlots, and build more houses at the detriment of the poor masses. To date, the vestige of his good works as Milad or your state are there for all to see. When he came back to limelight as Federal Minister of Police Affairs in 1999, under the civilian regime of President Olusegun Obasanjo, he initiated what is now known as the Police Service Commission (PSC) and ensured the duties of the commission is distinct for that of the Nigerian Police Force (NPF). Now. They did do the bidding of the army establishment of the 70s by nationalizing the Yoruba nation's pride of Bafemi Awolowo University. I think the response to this sublime question lives with us till date. Happy 80th birthday to the lovely husband of Chief Mrs. Modupe Agnes Jemi Benwon, daughter of late Chief John Bosedi Ajayi, Palogun of Ikolaba Ibadan, of blessed memory. Amen. Thank you.